Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to another video on ForgottenWeapons.com. I'm Ian McCollum, and I'm here today at Morphy's with a Remington model of 1890 revolver. Now, this thing looks an awful lot like a Colt single action army, and that is no coincidence. But let's go back a little bit to the revolver that Remington made fairly successfully in the Old West era. That would be the Remington model of 1875 here. This did well. It was never. Uh, you know, it was a competitor to Colt. It was never going to overtake Colt in popularity or sales, but they were good guns, well respected, and Remington sold a bunch of them. However, by the 1880s, the company's running into financial trouble for other reasons, and in 1886 it goes into receivership. So Remington would reform as a new company. It became the Remington Arms Company, and in 1888, uh, controlling interest passed into the hands of a guy named Marcellus Hartley. Now, Hartley had a bunch of other interests, and by the way, Hartley was a 50% owner of uh, Remington. The other 50% was at this point owned by the Winchester Company. We'll come back to that in a moment. Uh, Hartley had also been the founding partner in a company called Schuyler, Hartley & Graham, which was a massive uh, firearms dealer in the United States. They were actually the biggest in the 1860s. Think of them as kind of similar to Bannermans. They sold guns, ammo. Uh, accessories, all that sort of stuff. So Marcellus Hartley coming in and taking over controlling share in Remington, this wasn't his first experience in the firearms industry. And within, well, very quickly, in 1888, the first deal that he arranges related to this thing is Remington sells a bunch of leftover Model 1875 parts to Hartley's gun company. Not, not, Re uh, not Remington, but uh, Hartley and Graham. And they use these things to put together what they call a model of 1888 revolver, which is essentially what can we take from the old Remington stock that we can throw together pretty quickly and easily and just sell some pistols. And Remington, of course, needed money so and weren't really set up to be doing much because of their insolvency. So they sold the parts off. Those get built and sold. And within just a couple of years, as Remington gets its act together, it looks at this and goes, you know what? we could have done this ourselves. We don't need to subcontract this assembly and sale out to Marcellus' own other company. Like We can do it within Remington. And that is the genesis of the Model 1890. So let's take a closer look at it, and I'll show you what exactly they did with this. Here is our 1890. Here is the Remington 1875, from which it was basically built. And here is the Colt Single Action Army, which it was basically built to look like. So you can see, well, the main visible distinctive feature of the 1875 is this large triangular ejector support piece. And what they did on these guys is they actually had those pieces originally uh, built into the ejectors. These were made largely from parts and tooling from the 1875 to minimize cost, but they just cut out the bottom of that ejector support. Uh, Schuyler and Hartley's Model 1888s had done, it, had done that, again, just in order to make it look more like a Colt. And with the 1890, Remington continued that exact same practice. If you look at the frames, things like how the trigger guard is attached in their position of the action screws, all of these things are essentially identical. The 1890 is very much an 1875 that's been uh, kind of worked over a little bit aesthetically. These were offered in either blued or nickel finish. This one is blued or was blued. And they were offered with either five and three quarter inch or seven and a half inch barrel lengths. This one, barrel lengths at this time period in revolvers were always a little bit of plus and minus. This one's a little closer to five and a half, but the standards were five and three quarter and seven and a half, which are not coincidentally the two uh, common barrel lengths, the two longer common barrel lengths that Colt offered in its single action army. We've got a marking on the top of the barrel that is Remington Arms Company, Ilion, New York. Uh, that is the reformed name um, of Remington after its bankruptcy. These were all six shot guns, all chambered for 4440, or as it's marked here, 44 CFW, Centerfire Winchester. You usually on uh, guns, you will see that referred to as WCF, Winchester Centerfire. Uh, why not offer them in 45 Colt? Well, Aside from the fact that it says Colt, Hartley was a founding member of Union Metallic Cartridge, and he would certainly have wanted to do what he could to promote the cartridges that his own company had the biggest stake in, like, say, Winchester cartridges. Now, 
And that's about all there is to it. Functionally, this is just like a Colt single action army. It's a single action revolver. Open up a loading gate. You've got a manual ejector rod here. There we go. For ejecting cases, you load it one at a time, eject it one at a time. Basic single action revolver manual of arms. The Model 1890s go on sale in 1891, and sales would last a grand total of four years. A total of 2,020 of these revolvers would be made. That's it. That's a tiny number. This was a complete commercial failure. And it wasn't really a failure because of the quality of the gun. It's a perfectly fine gun. It, like Remington had lots of experience making this sort of thing by this point, and they did a good job on it. The problem was people just weren't really interested anymore. This is the 1890s. There's lots of double action revolvers out there. This is, not, this is old fashioned technology and that's how the market approached it. The cowboy era was gone. Uh, the cowboy era was not looked back on reminiscently yet uh, the way it would be in the 1950s and 60s. People wanted double action revolvers. They didn't want 40 for 40. They didn't want single action. Yeah, it looks like a Colt single action army. If I want a Colt single action army, I'll buy a Colt single action army. And so uh, within just a few years, Remington would abandon this. The last sales, the last significant sales were in 1894. There was one documented pistol assembled and sold in 1896, and that was the very end of it. Now it's also worth pointing out, I mentioned at the beginning of this video that 50% uh, 50, uh, 50 of Remington was actually owned by the Winchester Company in the aftermath of its bankruptcy. Well, this pistol was also sort of a way for Winchester to take a poke at Colt. Winchester and Colt had a long-standing sort of gentleman's agreement that Winchester wouldn't make revolvers and Colt wouldn't make lever-action uh, rifles. They would leave each other to dominate those two fields of the business. But nothing said that Remington couldn't make revolvers. And so uh, Winchester was able to uh, kind of get a little bit of a dig in with, they, they own 50% of this thing and uh, well, we'll just set up Remington to make it instead of us. I don't know how much of that was a serious commercial play for sales and how much of it was just sort of a, you know, we're competing companies and we like to take a pot shot at each other when we can. Ultimately, it had no effect on Colt and really no effect on Remington either because the sales of the 1890 were small enough that they didn't accomplish anything substantial. So that is the story on the Remington 1890. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching.